I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now for the Texas Pledge. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Good morning and welcome to this morning's edition of Aero News. Today is Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022. Now here's Time Rewind. Hello, it's Time Rewind for February 23rd. In 1997, scientists in Scotland announced the first successful cloning of an adult mammal. It's a sheep named Dolly with a genetic makeup identical to her mother's. This sparks global speculation about the possibility of human cloning. President Bill Clinton weighs in. Each human life is unique, born of a miracle that reaches beyond laboratory science. I believe we must respect this profound gift and resist the temptation to replicate ourselves. Rewind to 1954 when elementary school students in Pittsburgh received the first injections of the new polio vaccine developed by Dr. Jonas Salk. Not a single child who completed the Salk vaccinations died of paralytic polio. Whitney Houston dominates the airwaves in 1991 with her ninth number one single in five years. That's Time Rewind. I'm David Mendel. On the calendar for February 23rd, it's National Dog Biscuit Day. It's a notion that's been propagated by movies, magazines, and motivational speakers, and repeated by well-meaning folks and shysters alike. They tell you that you're only using 10% of your brain. If you're only able to access a fraction of your brain power, just imagine what you could do if you tapped into all that unused potential. Read other people's thoughts, play the stock market, crush cans with your mind and levitate. Well, not to rain on your brain parade, but that 10% stuff is so far off that it would be laughable if it weren't so widespread, and I kind of can't believe I'm still talking about it. So like many myths, it's hard to pinpoint exactly where it began. There's no definitive source, though some have linked it back to American psychologist William James and even Albert Einstein, who both suggested in so many words that we were only using part of our mental potential. But the fact is, we use pretty much every part of our brains. A lot of it is active most of the time, whether you're reading a book or listening to music or walking around town or even sleeping. How can we be so sure? Well, for one thing, neuroimaging techniques like PET scans and MRIs actually let us see the brain in action. These images show us that nearly every region of the brain lights up during even simple tasks like walking and talking. While we don't use all of our brain at once, just like we don't engage every single muscle at the same time, those scans prove that over the course of any given day, you use just about all of your brain. It also stands to reason that if 90% of your brain was useless, you could remove large portions of it, as you might an appendix or tonsil, and carry on as usual. Brain damage and disease wouldn't be as much of a concern if only 10% of the organ was actually functional. But in reality, there isn't a single area of the brain that can be damaged or diseased without resulting resulting in some kind of physical or mental consequence, small or big. You may have heard of the case of Phineas Gage, the 19th century railroad worker, who wound up with a spike through his head because of an accident. It didn't actually stay in his head, it went all the way through and then kept going for quite a while. It didn't kill him, somewhat surprisingly, and he still had his memories and his skills, but many of his friends reported that he had changed personalities. Now, we don't actually know a ton about Gage, because a lot of people used him to try and prove a lot of different points over the years, but there's little doubt that you can have a rod go through your brain and not have some things messed with. Then there's Clive Waring, the British pianist, who contracted a viral infection that destroyed his hippocampus, the part of the brain that controls the storage of memories. As a result, he's no longer able to recognize anyone but his wife, and he can't retain a memory for more than 30 seconds at a time. Every part of your brain has a function, and you need it in order to keep being you. And finally, we know that our brains are working all the time because we have to constantly feed them. Literally. The average human brain accounts for about 3% of a person's body weight, but it demands at least 20% of the body's energy to keep all those neurons firing. We're talking hundreds of food calories every day just so your brain can remind your heart to beat or help you solve for X or remember where you left your phone. Our constant need for food, especially foods rich in fats and sugars, has a lot to do with our brains, and it wouldn't make much evolutionary sense for us to expend so much energy feeding a useless, wet lump. So in the end, 
end, while telekinesis would be pretty awesome, our brains are already capable of truly incredible things. In fact, if anything, we only understand a fraction of what's really going on up there, so instead of insulting its function, be thankful for all that your brain does, which is more than you know. Seventh graders are able to pick up an application for the 2022-2023 school year's 8th grade high school credit advanced art class. Applications are open to all seventh graders, not just current art students, and can be picked up from Miss Bishop in room 253. Chess club anyone? There are a limited number of spots. Fill out an interest form in the AMS students course in Canvas. All levels are encouraged to join. Now here's your random fact of the day. A typical cough travels at 60 miles per hour, while a sneeze is often faster than 100 miles per hour. Electronic devices other than the assigned Chromebook are not to be used during the school day. These items include smart watches, gaming devices, cell phones, etc. Students must have their ID badges around their necks before entering the building. If students forget their ID, they can get a temporary one at the front office. The charge is $1 per day. Students that do not have the money will be charged. Students that need a new badge can purchase one for $5. Attention Austin students, it's A plus reselect time. Please sign into Canvas during homeroom this week to choose your last A plus class. Pick three classes you would like to take. You will be assigned one of your choices for the last nine weeks. It starts after spring break. All students must make their selections through the Google form posted in AMS students in Canvas or ask your homeroom teacher for the link by Friday, February 25th. Please see Ms. Brown in Office 206 with questions if needed. On the lunch menu for February 23rd, the cafeteria is serving build your own sub sandwiches, cheese pizza, pepperoni pizza, cheeseburgers, chicken smackers, and buffalo chicken smackers. As a reminder, doors open at 7 a.m. Breakfast is available until 7.25 a.m. The tardy bell at 7.30 a.m. The school day ends at 3.10 p.m. The Lily dismissal days end at 11.15 a.m. Your SAT word of the day is draconian, meaning excessively harsh and severe. Galveston weather. Thank you very much for watching this morning's edition of Aero News. Have a great day!